previous video, we looked at the conditions for constructive and destructive interference. Now, most of the time, Cambridge will say that, well, because you know it's physically easier to do it, the sources will start off in phase. Look at this word here, in phase, meaning the waves, when they are released from the dipper, they will both go down first. So see, A here goes down, B here also goes down. A here goes down first, B starts by going down. But what if the faces are out of phase? I mean, not faces, the source are both out of phase. What does out of phase mean again? Eh, revision a bit. So it can mean that your phase difference at the source is 180 degrees when the waves are created. Means if one fella is going up, the other fella is going down, that's out of phase. Okay, so how would the waves look like in that extra scenario? Here is the bonus video. Let's say wave A starts as a crest, like just now, right? We've been doing crest. Okay, let's start from the top. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can have a fuller view. Okay, let's draw the wave. There we go. So wave A from source A starts at the highest point and is going down. Travel, 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 travel to the right. Here it would meet at point P, which is some distance, some CM away. Okay, how about wave B? Hmm, how would you draw this wave so that they would meet constructive interference at point P? Wow, this is challenging. Gotta twist your brain a bit. But first, let's see what does out of phase mean? Huh? Out of phase means. If A starts like that, means B will have to start the other way. Something like this. So how to know? Well, down here, starts at the lowest point and is moving upwards. Whereas point A starts at the highest point and is moving downwards. So that's why it means out of phase. Get it? Okay, but we have a problem here. If they start out of phase, and you see how they're going to meet here? They are going to cancel each other out. We can't do that here. We want constructive interference. So in the cases when your source is already out of phase when you start, I think we need to shift our wave a little bit. So maybe, huh, what we can do is, let's shift. Oh no, don't rub off the wave. Let's give our wave... Okay, we want this point P to add together, right? Let's move this back a little bit. Something like that. Yeah, I think we can do this. So let me rub off the extra part. Yes, look at point P. Beautiful. Point, at point P, both waves are moving up towards the highest point. That's what we want, right? For constructive interference. So, in this case... You have a crest, plus a crest. Hey, we have a constructive interference. Okay, let's finish up the diagram. So this is wave B, starting from the lowest point and moving up. Out of phase, they don't go up and down together when the wave is created at the source. Now what about the, what you call it? What about the, 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 the path difference? Well, this is half a wavelength though. So let's label that. This distance. This is interestingly half a wavelength. And of course, the phase difference will be 180 degrees, which corresponds to half a wavelength. So now let's summarize our findings here. Now, if you want constructive interference at point P, if your, if your source is out of phase, then our path difference have to be multiples of 0 0.5. Oh, 0 0.5 of a wavelength, 1.5 of a wavelength. You can try draw many things, huh? but we're going to draw only one scenario here. Okay, 2.5 and so on and so forth. Whereas the phase difference... It's a multiple of 180. So 180, then you add 360, it becomes 540. 
and so on and so forth. Okay, by the way, uh, there's two, you see there's two phase difference here, right? One phase difference here, one phase difference here. Uh, they are different one. Uh. The second one is phase difference of the two waves. The difference between the wave, one is lagging behind the other. Whereas the 180 here is the phase difference of the sources when they are created. Okay, the wave is created at the source. That's what it means. Okay, so two different phase difference. So at the end, oh, if you look at it, phase difference of the wave is 180. Ah. Do we write it like that? Oh, actually, no. We won't say it like that because at the end of the day, look at what's happening here. Although they started off 180, well, you can say the phase difference is zero because they ended up going up together. So zero, or you can say 360, or so on and so forth. So in this case, we won't just look at the waves. We have to consider the source as well. So whatever value I wrote just now, at 180. Because of the source that already caused a phase difference. So plus, oh man, there's no space. Add here, plus 180 to your answers. Mm, then you get this. Okay. What about if you want them to cancel out? Let's see on the right side. As usual, we have wave A traveling, 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 and then it meets the designated point P at the end, and it is going up towards a crest, the highest point. Now, remember the question here, well, how do we get them to cancel out destructive? And your source must be out of phase. Okay. So let's try the out of phase. Hmm. Let's try down here. Meaning, the pink wave will start at the bottom, go up, down, exactly the opposite of the blue wave, up, down, and up, down. Oh wow, my handwriting is, could be better. <laughs> let's shift it a little bit later. Oh, actually let's shift it now. Okay, so at the end, when they meet, okay, wave B travels from lowest point going up, travel, travel, travel. Oh, they cancel out. Look at that. One wave wants to go up, the other wave wants to go down. Ah, ha, ha. So this is a case where you have destructive interference occurring, negative A. So let's summarize that in the diagram or the box above. So the path difference here, what is the path difference here? There's no difference, right? They are just, they travel the same distance, okay? So if you take a ruler and you measure this whole distance as 10 cm length, both of the wave travel 10 cm length. So there's no path difference, zero. I guess it could also be multiples of wavelength, one lambda. How do you see that? Well, let me try. So let's shorten the path. Zing, 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 zing. Let's go here. Actually, no, let's, do... let's just erase the path. Lah. Let's shorten it by erasing. So let's say B started a little bit later here. He traveled a shorter path because of the triangle. So this will be an example of starting one wavelength later. But still out of phase because here is moving up and the, and the source is moving down. So this distance, this is what we call the path difference of one full wavelength and you will end up still cancelling each other out. Okay, la, so confirm la, full wavelength. You will have them cancelling each other out. For phase difference, okay, the corresponding phase difference for this will be full cycle, so 360 degrees. <gasps> but wait, same like just now, this is the phase difference of the waves. So normally you will say, oh, it's 0, 360, la 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 la, so and so forth. But don't forget, chop, wait, 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 wait. The source is out of phase 180 already. 
So we got to change our answer a little bit, like just now. Okay, in the beginning, they're already out of phase. So we got to add 180 here and add 180. Add or minus, lah, up to you. So I'm going to change my answer and say, well, look, they're meeting out of phase. So the answer cannot be zero anymore. No, one wave is going up. One wave is going down. That's out of phase. So that should be 180. Next one, 540. So on and so forth. That's how they cancel out. Okay, the extra degrees due to the source. Alright, so let's look at the big picture. Whoa, look at that. All the scenarios. Ah. So the normal case, what Cambridge will do most of the time, most of the time, is the scenario above, where you have um, the two waves created in phase. So that's up there. Okay, so these are the ones you can memorize. But in the occasion, very, very rare occasion, when they say, oh, one of the waves is out of phase, then you need to remember to swap. What does it mean by swap? Okay, let me show you the differences. Let's highlight. So beginning for constructive, you need a path difference of full lambdas, right? But then if your face or your source is created out of face, then if you have a path difference of full lambdas, it becomes destructive. So it kind of swaps this way. Oh. And if you want something to be destructive interference in the beginning, well, you want it to be 0 0.5, 1 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, a lot of 0.5. But then if you switch the source, one, one is out of phase to the other, then if you get a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's actually constructive interference. Okay, so the difference here is your path difference conditions will be a swap. You see the swap happening here? <laughs> Depending on how the source is like. Rare occasions are rare occasions. Don't tell me I didn't warn you, but I've seen it in Cambridge maybe one or two times. So just in case you encounter it, this is what to take note. Okay, but that is all for today's videos. Whew, diving into detail of the conditions. Do practice drawing waves. There's not really equations for you here at this level. So being able to visualize the waves and how they meet at a point will be really, really helpful for you. Okay, that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.